In 1852 New Orleans, Julie has it all. Wealth, status, youth, looks, and a loving fiancé. What more could a girl want? For Julie, it was control. Throughout the film, Julie's wardrobe becomes an extension of her character, embodying her defiance of the culture that surrounds her. The star of the movie is the gown Julie decides to wear to the Olympus Ball. In a brash retaliation, she disregards traditional protocol by ordering a scandalous red dress to wear to the forthcoming ball, where unmarried women were only to ever be seen in white. The dressmaker informs us that the gown was made for a local woman of ill repute, but this information only strengthens Julie's perverse desire to wear it. The dress is sleeveless and low-cut, very different from the prim and proper white lace gown she was supposed to wear as all the other girls wore. In white, she was just another girl at the ball. In red, she was an individual. What she intended to be a scheme to get back at her fiancé press for standing her up at her dress fitting backfires, culminating in press breaking off their engagement. For the following year, regretful Julie waits at home with her white dress ready for the day press returns. In an attempt to win him back, Julie dons the off-the-shoulders white dress with soft frills. She is lovelier than ever, but it is too late. Press has already married another girl. The film's outstanding antebellum costumes were designed by Ori Kelly. The gowns do follow the historical lines of the 1850s, though they appear to lack their proper corsetry, except for one dressing scene when we're shown her corset and cage crinoline. Her hair is styled in a more historical fashion, but the makeup is very 1930s.